My name is Mr. Bartlick Bartlick and I welcome you to this channel a channel of construction basic knowledge and kindly subscribe to watch more of construction basic knowledge videos. Welcome Madam Green. Thank you for your warm welcome and I had already subscribed. I appreciate for your good work and with this channel I'm sure I will acquire vast experience on construction basic knowledge. Thank you. So today let's have a discussion about SBC, I mean soil bearing capacity, because I feel it's a good discussion that our viewers who would want to know more about soil bearing capacity when it comes to construction. That's right even me I'm eager to know more about SBC, soil bearing capacity. Therefore what is SBC or what is soil bearing capacity? In a nutshell, bearing capacity is the capacity of soil to support the loads that are applied to the ground above or it's the maximum amount of pressure or load that soil can withstand without failing or deforming too much. It's a key factor in the design of roads, bridges, foundations and other infrastructure projects. Why is ground bearing pressure important? Mr. Bartlick Bartlick Ground bearing pressure, bearing capacity of soil is important because whenever a load is placed on the ground such as from a building foundation, a crane or a retaining wall the ground must have the capacity to support it without excessive settlements or failure. This means that it is important to calculate the bearing capacity of the underlying soil during the design phase of any construction project. Failing to understand and account for the ground bearing pressure before beginning the project could have catastrophic consequences such as a building foundation collapsing at a later stage. Do we have types of bearing capacity of soil Mr. Bartlick Bartlick? The most commonly used types of bearing capacity of soil are ultimate bearing capacity and allowable bearing capacity. Let's take a look at the definitions of these terms first. The ultimate bearing capacity of soil is the maximum vertical pressure that can be applied to the ground surface, at which point a shear failure mechanism develops in the supporting soil. In essence, the ultimate soil bearing capacity test identifies the maximum amount of load the soil can take before it fails, or gives way completely. This figure isn't used on its own in the foundation design process, as it's also important to consider how soil will settle under pressure, which could affect its ability to support the structure. The allowable bearing capacity of soil is the amount of load the soil can take without experiencing shear failure or exceeding the allowable amount of settlement. This is the figure that is used in the design of foundations. The allowable bearing capacity is always lower than the ultimate bearing pressure because it takes into account the settlement of soil, not just the load required to cause shear failure. Bearing capacity types and formula types of bearing capacity of soil are ultimate bearing capacity, Q, the maximum vertical pressure that can be applied to the ground surface, at which point a shear failure mechanism develops in the supporting soil. Net ultimate bearing capacity, Q, this is the ultimate bearing capacity minus the weight of soil, multiplied by the depth of the foundation, D. The formula is Q equals Q, DF. Net ultimate bearing capacity, Q, this is the ultimate bearing capacity minus the weight of soil, multiplied by the depth of the foundation, D. The formula is Q equals Q, DF. Net safe bearing capacity, Q, the allowable bearing capacity, Q, is the net ultimate bearing capacity, Q, divided by a factor of safety, typically this will be 3. The formula is Q equals Q slash F, the factor may be increased to limit settlements further if required. Gross safe bearing capacity, Q, dividing the ultimate bearing capacity by a factor of safety gives you the gross safe bearing capacity, Q equals Q slash F. Net safe settlement pressure, Q, the maximum load the soil can take before it exceeds the allowable amount of soil settlement. Net allowable bearing capacity, Q subscript A. This is the value used in the design of foundations, and is often simply referred to as the allowable bearing capacity. The net allowable bearing capacity, Q subscript A, is equal to either the net safe bearing capacity, Q, or the net safe settlement pressure, Q, whichever is the lower figure. How is bearing capacity of clay soil calculated Mr. Bartlick Bartlick? The calculation method depends very much on the soil type. In saturated clays and other fine grain soils, the incompressible pour water support supplied loads initially, raising the pour water pressure in the soil beneath the applied load. The low permeability of clay means it can take months or years for the pour water to flow, pressures to dissipate, the soil skeleton to compress in the ground surface to settle. 
This means that clays are generally more vulnerable to bearing capacity failure in the short term before excess poor water pressures dissipate and effective stress rises. Although that all seems quite complicated, the calculation method for short-term bearing capacity in clays is relatively straightforward and linear since a single, uniform value of undrained shear strength, unchanged by the applied loading, is normally assumed. The long-term bearing capacity clays are usually greater, so this is rarely critical, but it can be calculated using the same method as for sands. What about soil bearing capacity calculation for granular soil? The bearing capacity of sands and gravels are not normally critical in design because they are relatively strong and because effective stresses within the soil increase immediately under the applied load due to their high permeability. It does not take months or years for this to happen like in a typical clay soil. Only loose sands with a high water table under a concentrated load such as a piling rig may have an issue with bearing capacity. In most cases settlement governs the design. The calculation of bearing capacity in granular soils such as sands is more complicated because it depends on the effective stress along the assumed failure mechanism, which varies with depth and soil density and due to the applied load itself. Dilatancy in the sand on shearing also complicates matters. Mr. Bartlett Bartlett tell me the typical soil bearing capacity values. Here are a few of the typical values you might see for the safe bearing capacity of different soils. Soil type safe bearing capacity value CP, clay soil is equal or more than 75, firm clay is 75 to 100, loose gravel is equal to or more than 200, and dense gravel is between 200 to 600. These are just a few of the many soils and their safe bearing capacity. The determination of bearing capacity can be a difficult process, however with Tensar soil design software, Calculations of bearing capacity can be incredibly easy for all of your geotechnical engineering projects. The calculation methods for both soil types are derived from the simplified geometric case of an infinitely long strip load with a vertical load and horizontal ground surface. Various factors can then be introduced to take approximate account of other shaped loadings, for example rectangular, square, circular, inclined loads and inclined surfaces. These methods also assume uniform, Homogeneous soil conditions, but a working platform is a good example of a two-layer bearing capacity problem, that is crane or piling rig loads are applied to the surface of dense granular layer overlying a weaker subgrade composed of clay or sand, for example. Conventional calculation methods cannot be applied here but Tensor developed the fully validated T-value design method to take account of this particular situation and to introduce the benefits of soil stabilization using Tensor Geogrids in a scientifically rigorous way. Hopefully up to the point you have basic knowledge about soil bearing capacity isn't. Yes Mr. Bartlick Bartlick, I have understood the basics of soil bearing capacity, that is to say the definition, why we use it the types of soil bearing capacity, the calculation methods and typical values of soil bearing capacity of different soil type. Thank you and I appreciate a lot for the SBC basic knowledge. You're much welcome, and for my viewers kindly subscribe and do not forget to like, share and comment. Thank you for watching.